Beep, 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 beep. Welcome to the Court of the EDI Jester. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night time here, as usual, with my tea, so that I can slurp and annoy, annoy those who don't like the slurping, right? If you don't like slurping, don't watch. And then I'll have a vape, which will annoy those that don't like vaping. It's just me. Leave me alone, right? How you doing, folks? Right, it's time to become warrior teacher. Um, yeah. So, filling up, which is great. Got some people coming along, looking to, to, to see a nice array of different people with different ideas and different thoughts about things. So, do come and join us if you can. Look at my pinned tweet. Other than that, you can support me as a jester right by joining. You can subscribe and share, and that's the most important thing, is to subscribe and share. And to put your notifications on so you know when I'm wibbling. Other than that, you can also support me on my Substack. Or buy me a coffee. Whichever you'd like to do. Any way that you can help will be gratefully received. Now, you may be familiar with the Queen's Speech where two um, older pufters get together on a regular basis and regale us with conversation around topics of great import. I speak, of course, of uh, Dennis of the Kavanaugh, right? And our, well, I call him Serial Killer Clive, because he does these wonderful documentaries about serial killers. Um, so I, I always I look forward to those with, with, uh, with, uh, with real joy because they're so informative and he's brilliant at doing it. So... So we've got Dennis and Clive. The number of times I've said Derek and Clive, you wouldn't believe. But we've got Dennis and Clive, right? So now, Dennis has appeared on a number of things, including GB News. But he's got a great article in the Spikehead Online, which he wrote, wrote for Spiked and, and was, was released on the 7th of December. So a shout out to both Clive and Dennis, but most of all, Dave for Dennis, who has produced for us uh, a good piece of documentation that is worth us having a look at. And then you go in and have it a read of, right? So Dennis has said... In the spiked online under identity politics, Kemi is right. Trans ideology is a threat to gay kids. So-called gender affirming care is merely a new form of gay conversion therapy. Now, this is a uh, this article is always is really there's a sort of side thing to it, which is he appeared on GB News with the marvelous Andrew, and you can also see that. I'll try and find the link and put that in the dubers as well. Speaking in the House of Commons yesterday, continues Dennis, the UK Secretary of State for Women and Equalities, Kemi Badnock warned of the risks of transing the gay away. Dennis said, we are, she said, we are seeing almost an epidemic of young gay children being told they are trans and being put on a medical pathway. That was Kemi said that, right? If you remember, in her wonderful bravura performance in Parliamentaries, right? In, in, it's difficult to overstate what a seismic shift, says Dennis, in public discourse her statement represents. I think he's right. I think it is a seismic shift. I think we're seeing something that so many of us have waited to see. I, it made me cry. We've been fighting this long. It, just, it felt like a release. And suddenly I had a bit of a weep. Because it was so wonderful to hear somebody say it. And not only hear and say it, but to realise with utter joy that it's now in Hansard. That is massively significant. So that's, you know, 50 years from now, people will be able to read that. About a period of time when we went mad and tried to sterilise our children and treat them that they were the opposite sex. It's going to be such a record, isn't it, to have that in Hansard for historians. Dennis continues. These words would certainly have led to her being cancelled from the Labour Party or even banned from Twitter in the pre-Elon Musk era. Here was Badnock saying what was, until recently, utterly unsayable, and in Parliament, no less. The public now well understands that the extreme trans agenda is in conflict with women's rights. This can be illustrated easily with just a few photographs of men winning trophies in women's sports. But its conflict with gay rights is less understood. Not least as all of the mainstream former gay rights charities like Stonewall insist there isn't any conflict at all. When trans activist zealots chant no LGB without the T, any outsider could be forgiven for thinking the so-called LGBT community is all big one big happy family, but there's been a huge schism in the community ever since Stonewall decided in 2015 to embrace gender identity ideology and to insist there can be no debate on that decision and its implications. New gay rights campaign groups such as LGB Alliance and Gay Men's Network, of which I am a director, have long been, not me, Dennis, have long been voicing concerns about the threat the trans movement poses to young people. The evidence for this is legion. Some 80 to 90% of children who present at gender clinics say they are same-sex attracted. Right. You know when people say this, 80 to 
I'm, I'm going to say to you that I think it's probably 80 to 90 percent same sex attracted. I say it's closer to 100 percent because one in 10 will lie. And how do I know that? Because I would have when I was a child. Are you gay? No, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, salivating over the cast of whatever it was. That happened to be the show that had the best looking lads on it. I know what would it have been? God, I don't know now. What was I about thirty to fourteen? It would have been my it would have been my crushes. Do you honest, honest to God, I don't know. Well, it wasn't pop stars. I wonder who it would have been. Can't think now. Funny old world, and I can't remember anything. So Dennis continues that um, according to a 2018 report by Dr. David Bell on the Tavistock Gender Identity Service, homophobic parents would often seek to transition their same-sex attracted children. This is the same practice that you see in, in, in places like Iran. Chop your bits off, we're going to kill you. Or Iraq, chop your bits off, we're going to kill you. Same thing, trans in the gay way, gay conversion therapy. Um, one Tavistock clinician, continues Dennis, once made the dark joke that thanks to gender transitioning, soon there will be no gay people left at all. Another once said that transitioning feels like a new form of gay conversion therapy. Many young patients were fast-tracked for medical interventions such as puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones while the underlying causes of their distress, including same-sex attraction, weren't ignored. According to Sonia Appleby, the Tavistock's former safeguarding lead, these clinical practices were adopted largely at the behest of trans activist groups like mermaids. At the Gay Men's Network, we have a long bit, we have long been urging politicians to take these concerns seriously. Yesterday, Kemi Badnock did just that. I believe this is a new form of conversion therapy. She told the Commons. Now, what you've had from me there is approximately half of the article. Please do, do go and read. I'll put it in the doobers. Uh, this is in a spite. Dennis has taken the time to write it. You can take the time to read it. So please do go and have a look. Um, I'm with Dennis and Kemi on this 100%. Trans in the gay away is now a thing. It's gay conversion therapy. The second, and I keep saying this, but I'll keep saying it until we stop it. The second a child shows any interest in any of this gender identity queer nonsense is a safeguarding uh, is a safeguarding situation. And I would, you know, to muddy the waters, which will upset some people, I would say if they show an interest in critical race theory, it's a safeguarding issue. We have to understand that this hydra that we fight, which includes gender, which Dennis has talked about so eloquently here, and which Kemi described so beautifully and held the line on so beautifully in Parliament, is just part of a many-headed hydra at, which the root, uh, at the root of which is the need to create power and oppression narratives and therefore disrupt and divide society in, in searching for a utopia that doesn't exist. That's the root. Yeah, that's the, that's the sort of body of the hydra and then the three get the heads. Okay? And once we realise that, it becomes easier for us to um, start to understand exactly how, what it's going to take to get this out. And I think it will need to be, like they did in Ohio, specific legislation which states uh, that anything that's got the power and oppression narrative at its root needs to be eradicated from the schools and education systems, including universities. Get it out. Um, and if they start doing that, uh, what, I, what I call commie nonsense, just kick them out. Why do we tolerate that? Do we tolerate Nazis? Why do we tolerate communists? It's insane. Right, so, um, okay, uh, that's it for today. <laughs> Who am I upset? <laughs> but it's great to talk to you as usual. Um, please do go and do your thing, all right? I'll see you later.